So good morning everyone and welcome to this Flourish session. Um, I'm here with Vicky from Belton Wigan who is going to be taking you through uh, a few hours of self-branding. Vicky's going to introduce herself and tell you a bit more about that in a moment. We've, uh, Vicky's been on one of our Time to Grow programmes previously and now she's a uh, she set up doing all sorts of different interesting things in the world of social media and we work with her a lot now and she's one of our Flourish associates so welcome Vicky. Vicky do you want to say a couple of words about yourself before we start? Yeah sure yeah I will do thanks everybody for coming today I really appreciate it there's always that little moment in your head where you start a session where you think oh what if no one turns up so I'm really pleased to see so many faces um yeah my name's Vicky I um I've got a background in journalism. I worked for national newspapers and magazines as a sub-editor mainly and then a writer um, for sort of 15 years. And then I decided to retrain as a teacher um, and I spent about five years on and off in primary schools. So um, I ended up going, coming back out of teaching into back into journalism. And then I decided in the pandemic to set up my own business <laughs> why wouldn't you so I yeah I was furloughed um from my job in the pandemic and I got a bit bored after a few weeks at home with my two daughters um and I thought I've really I've really had the seed of an idea in my head for quite a while now the way I could help people like community groups and not-for-profits um because I'd done a lot of volunteering in my local area uh, but people really struggled with marketing and um, just needed a little bit of a push sometimes because they did have those skills in there, but maybe not the confidence. So set up the business and yeah, I've not looked back since. It's been absolutely brilliant. I'm helping people with websites um, sort of social media posting, brochures, leaflets, anything that you need on digital or um, print. And I do a lot of training as well, so that can help you to take that marketing forward and make it your own. Um, okay, so am I am I all right to share my screen? Yeah, so, absolutely. If anyone's got any questions for Vicky now or um, throughout, then then do let us know. It's you know it's a really interesting story, and I think possibly one that can resonate with uh, lots of people um, who are looking for you know different types of work. But it's really encouraging to hear how your business has done really well, even you know in particularly challenging times like a pandemic so yeah go for it Vicky. thank you very much um okay while while i'm just um talking as well at the beginning i thought it might be a good idea if you just do a little bit of an introduction to the chat. Uh, if you want to um tell just tell people who you are um what you what you're working in or what you like to work in and uh if you've got a website or any social media channels that you want people to, to have a look at you can put those in the chat as well because this is a networking opportunity as well so let's not let's not waste that opportunity um Sorry, you want everyone to do that in the chat or are we going yeah. to yeah brilliant in the chat yeah in the in the chat and then we'll uh by the end of the session we should have lots of sort of contacts in the chat um that you can save and uh uh get in touch with people after okay i'm just going to share my screen now so you should be able to see a um presentation and we're going to start on the first page which is always a good way to begin. can you see that yeah okay so we are looking at self-branding to improve your career today um, so this is like the objectives basically of the of the session today this is what we're going to be covering um, we're going to look at creating profiles on different social media channels. Um, we're going to look at adding content as well because um, we need to keep it nice and varied. And also building your community because once you've got those socials running, it's really important to keep in touch with people. Uh, we're going to look at your previous achievements and how you can bring those into your content as well. And we're going to do a little bit of a brainstorm. I think, um, I might, can I put people in breakout rooms, Shelley, later? Would that be possible? Yeah, we can do some brainstorming about um, your previous achievements and what how you can include them in posts. Uh, we're going to explore, explore soft skills as well. Um, so those skills that are transferable from one job to another, uh, and or even soft skills that you've learned 
in uh, your daily life. It could be at home, volunteering, parenting. Um, it could be not, not particularly job related. It could be from a hobby. And we're going to look at wider networking online in, and in person. Um, then also we're, we're going to look at, I should have put an extra one on there. We're going to look at sort of presenting your personal branding in, in a different way, not just on socials. We're going to look at websites and um, portfolios of work and a bit of blogging as well. So let's um, move on to the next slide. If I can work out how to do that. Yeah. So personal branding, what, what is it all about? Um, it means a lot of things, doesn't it, personal branding? Some, some of it's quite invisible and not very noticeable, and it's just a very subtle thing where people um, have built up sort of an online persona. Sometimes it's more visible, like um, people set up their own sort of logos uh, with professional photos. They might choose proper branding, like with colour scheme, patterns, um, and th that kind of personal branding is often used when people are self-employed and they want to carry on their career like under their name. Um, but there's no reason that you can't do that if, you, if you're looking for a job or you're just looking for ne your next opportunity. Um, if, you, if you sort of imagine that you're a company and if you think of companies that, like Coca-Cola, I always use it as an example, They've got a recognisable colour scheme, haven't they, with the red and the black and the white. They've got a logo, which basically hasn't changed barely since about, well, I think it was like 1910s or 20s when it first came out. Um, they've, they're a recognisable name. They're everywhere that you go. You see them in the shops. You see them online. You see the advertising. And it's, it's a similar thing when it comes down to any kind of marketing or personal branding. Yeah. You want people to recognise you. And, oh, I think we've got somebody who's not on mute. Can you just make sure that you're on mute? Thank you. Um, if you want people to recognise you as a person and then immediately link your face and what you're doing with your skills, your experience, your background, your beliefs, um, and that's what personal branding is all about. So a vision board will really help, and there is... Or a session coming up um, on the 17th of March with Jackie Bailey, and that's a, a flourish session about vision, vision boarding. So please do that, because if you haven't already done a vision board or you've not done one for a while, then this can really, really um, help you sort of get all your ideas together in one place. So, yeah, you wanted to attract like-minded people who are going to get on board with you and what you're doing, Um and this is why it's so important to, to brand yourself properly. So you can start by improving your online persona by sort of creating different profiles on, on different social media platforms. We're, we're really lucky nowadays. Like I'm saying nowadays, I'm 40. So when, um, when I was finishing uni and looking for a job and stuff, nobody did digital TVs or had social media really. I think it was MySpace, which was the, the rage back then. Um, but it wasn't really used for sort of careers. So there, there, was, there was a limited opportunity to, to sort of put yourself out there online. But now we're really lucky. We've got lots of different social media channels that we can use for free. Um, we need to make sure that we're utilising these because employers nowadays or stakeholders or customers, anybody who might work with you in the future, either um, an employee or a colleague or people who's going to search for you online and, and the first thing that they'll find online is likely to be social media channels. So, um, yeah, you need to make sure that these social media channels reflect who you are um sometimes we've like used them in the past for day-to-day -day things like showing people what you've had for breakfast that kind of thing and that, that um you know maybe some, some of the more mundane things in life but we really can show our qualities through the, our social media and show off these soft skills as well 
Um, it's all part of what the wider networking online and in person. If people recognise your face because they've seen you online and they've followed your social medias uh, and they've um, maybe read your blog on your website, seen a video, then they're more likely to come up to you in person and start a conversation or arrange a Zoom meeting with you because they, they know who you are, they've seen you and um, they, want, they want to get to know you a little bit better. Oh, I seem to have gone the wrong way there, sorry. So what I've, I've sort of discovered this concept re recently called Ikigai. It's a, a Japanese concept for finding your purpose or reason for being, and it makes so much sense. Um, it's basically looking at certain aspects of your life and then really digging down deeper into what you want from life and what, and what, what your sort of purpose in life is and what your goals are. So we're, we're going to have a go. We're going to have a quick exercise now. I hope you've all got a bit of paper handy. If you haven't, just grab um, a, a notebook or, so, or something on your, on your phone. Um, we're going to just look at the outer four sections at the moment. We're going to try and map these out. So we've got what what you love, what the world needs, what you can be paid for, and what you're good at. Okay, so we're just going to start with those first of all, and then we're going to dig a little bit deeper. So we'll give just give you um, a couple of minutes to just scribble down, and I'll do the same. Just scribble down those four sections. Can everyone see the the words okay on this? Put your hands up if you've got if you can't see anything. Um, but the three the four circles are what you love, what the world needs, what you can be paid for, and what you're good at. I love this idea. I've not heard of Icky Guy. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it seems just so sensible, you know, because you can kind of get lost, can't you, in in your thoughts and your yeah. feelings. And pulled in different directions, and if you can find this sweet spot, then that's the ideal scenario, isn't it? That's what it's all about, yeah. And when you do one of these, you call it a Vicky guy. <laughs> <laughs> that's a really good idea. <laughs> I'm going to put that on my notepad now. <laughs> This will also help you if you're um, applying for any kind of funding in future, because you can sort of bring these elements in to, to funding bids, um, particularly the, the, the sort of what the world needs section, because that's what, what social enterprises are all about, isn't it, really, addressing the needs of the of society. Yeah, absolutely. Right, and then when you so you should have sort of four areas now on the outside that you've had to think about. So the next section is where the overlap happens. So with with the passion, for example, that's like a combination of what you love and what you were good at. So if you can think of sort of a time where you're doing something that you love and you're good at it, or an, an example of, of when that happened, or even a feeling of how you felt when that happened. And then we'll go, just go through the, the other inner four sections then. So my example was would be like, my, my what you love was helping people. And then 
what you were good at, I've put digital skills and training. So my, my passion comes in together where I help people learn how to upskill. And it might be, you know, depending on where people are in terms of developing their ideas, it might be that you have more than one thing in each of the sections mm. and, uh, and some of them might overlap more naturally. And it might be that that's where you focus what you work on. Right. And then in the middle, when you've got everything that comes together, that is when you are hitting the sweet spot. Like uh, that, I like that phrase, Shelley. Like Shelley said, that's the sweet spot. That's your EK guy. So, does anybody want to share with us sort of some of the things that they've put down on their notepads? Can you explain it a little bit to us? If you just come off your mic, if you want to have a little share. Abby. Yeah, me, me, you can hear me. Yes, we can hear you. Yeah, basically, I put for what you love, again, I put making others happy. That's my main thing, what I enjoy in life. Uh, what the world needs, I put more support for DB victims because I don't think that there is just like help that the start but then going forward and how you move forward with your life i don't feel like there is any support for that because it is something i've experienced myself um what can you be paid for i put providing a service um i kind of didn't get really to get that part um and what you're good at listening talking and helping us that's amazing brilliant and then when those overlaps come in do you feel like like you'll be hitting this sort of sweet spot in life where you when you're working to help people. Yeah. Oh, that's brilliant. There's a bit of a delay on that, but it was. <laughs> I heard you. That's brilliant. Thank you Sorry, so much. Sorry, keep seeing my internet. <laughs> Oh, wait, wait, we heard you loud and clear, so thank you very much. Sometimes, um, um, if, uh, if your internet's a bit sluggish, if you turn off your camera, sometimes it means we can get your sound. Um, but yeah, it's a bit hit and miss. Or you can put stuff in the chat, but yeah, that can help. Thank you. Yeah, another another good one as well is if you're on your computer or you've turned off like the Wi-Fi on your other devices, for some reason that helps speed it up. And um, does anybody else want to share an example that they've written down? Don't be shy. I can go. Um, so the, this is kind of the reason that I ended up looking at going into coaching because my profession, I was made redundant recently, but my profession was kind of in the corporate world managing people and the thing that I enjoyed the most out of that was helping other people particularly women because I worked in quite a male-dominated area um, work out what their own version of success was rather than the typical moving up the career ladder and helping them to get there so that kind of came to lead me to if I'm going to do something different what would I do and, and that's why I want to get into coaching um others because I thought well the world needs more women at more senior levels but women that actually enjoy being at senior levels instead of getting burnt out and you can be paid for that and I think the coaching and the mentoring side of things are the things that I good at I'm good at and that's what I feel most passionate about so if I can bring all of that together in a coaching role then I think that would be my icky guy yeah, that's brilliant. Thanks, Eve. That is that that is the aim, isn't it? Because when you when you love what you do and you and you know how it can help people, then 
your work doesn't feel like work then does it it yeah. just feel like something you want to do um but yeah <laughs> that's brilliant thank you for sharing um so hopefully we'll we'll all be in this brilliant ikigai state of mind in a, in a few years i think i'm getting there i'm doing some really enjoyable stuff at the moment so um it's all good right okay so um we're going to just have a little think um i think you've probably got it down on your paper now but this this links in now who you want to be what you want to do links in with what your public image needs to be and how you're going to portray that uh, i've got an example up here who's one of my faves um he's called neil patel i don't know if you've heard of him before but he's kind of an internet guru so website guru he's really good on seo um, blogging he, in in a lot of the stuff that he offers the information that he offers is, is completely free so make sure you follow him on them um, twitter linkedin ev everywhere uh he does some really good videos as well and he's dev it is a dead friendly personable guy so think about the public image that you want to portray um what do you want people to, to do or think when they see you online um, and we're going to look at that sort of call to action in a, in a bit. And how can having an easily recognisable personal brand help you? So there are sort of th three, three questions um, that you might want to consider. So for, for me, um, my, my sort of goal was to portray helpfulness, um, a willingness to, to a willingness to learn as well I'm a sort of a lifelong learner and I, I kind of advocate you know constant self-improvement um I want to portray my skills to people so that I can show them what I do um and what I do well my experience as well my past experience which could be better at to be honest I should get a, a little bit more teaching stories in there and um some tabloid stories as well <laughs> and uh, but I want to portray that I'm friendly and approachable I've got a good attitude I think and um some of my beliefs as well especially when you work for uh, when you want to be in the social enterprise arena you need to make sure you sort of align in your beliefs with with what you do um, so what, what I want people to do is I want them to contact me. So I usually leave a call to action in my posts, like get in touch or visit my page or see my blog. I want them to engage with my socials. I want them to follow me so that they see my content again and again and again. Uh, sometimes I might want them to give me a job or give me uh, use my business so that they can... They can um, become sort of part of my regular work. Uh, I might want them to collaborate with me as well and do joint projects. Uh, and I want them to speak to me in real life as well. So this goes back to getting your face out there and your voice out there so that people will feel like they can just come up to you if they see you in an event or if you're walking through town and say, oh, hi. And that's how you build relationships, isn't it, basically? So the, the goal is to become recognisable online and it's forming habits. So if people see you and your branding and your voice and your sort of ethos all the time, then they will think of you and your persona. They, so it, then it gets to the point where, like the Coca-Cola logo, if you see a van going past with Coca-Cola on, you think... Ah, I want the Coke now. I want to go to the shop and get Coke or whatever, you know, chocolate takeaways are the worst, aren't they? Just eat. Ah. So that's that's the kind of the power of branding, really. Oh, I've gone the wrong way again. So here was uh, just a few examples. There was loads of examples online. If you um, want some some sort of inspiration and some ideas, Canva's brilliant for that. This is the, the app that I'm on at the moment, C-A-N-V-A. -A. If you haven't got Canva, there's a free version and, and you can get the pro version for free if you work for a not-for-profit. 
um, or if you have, have applied as a not-for-profit. It, otherwise, it's about £100 a year. And Canva has lots of templates on that you can use that are sort of already done kind of like this. You just put your picture in, you put your words in your logo and you, you're aware. Um, so consider creating your own website, blog or portfolio um, so that you can get people who are interested in you in the socials to engage a little bit more with you and find out more about you than just a snippet. And um, further reading, there's a really good article on Wix blog called Personal Branding, the Ultimate Step-by-Step -step Guide. So I would really recommend that after this session, if, if you want to find out a little bit more, then give that a read. It, there's some really clear sort of steps on, on how, to, how to improve. Can you just repeat what that's called, please? Yes, it's called the Wix blog, W-I-X, and it's called Personal Branding, the Ultimate Step-by-Step -step Guide. Um, and yeah, it's got some really good tips in there. Right, so we're going, going to look at um, LinkedIn a bit now. Can we have a little bit of a chat in the chat? Can I just see where you are with LinkedIn? If you're already on it, if you're not on it, if you're on it but don't really use it much, or if you're on it and sort of use it all the time, sort of regularly. Uh, I'm I'm on it. I've got a business page on it as well, and I try and use it about three or four times a week. I, I should be really be using it every day, but time wise, um, I get a bit distracted. But I've got some. I've got a few tips on that that might help you as well. So some not on it. I'm not on it. Keen to learn more. You haven't really used it much, not on it yet. You used in previous job roles, but need to update. Yeah, that's brilliant because it is like a CV online all the time. So it will grow and build with you if, if, if you keep it going. I'm on it, but I don't post, don't really use it not yet. Right, okay, so that's good. So majority sort of not, not using it um, too much. Uh, and yeah, if you've got two profiles that you need to combine, that... That's a really good um, idea if you've got to. Somebody's made one of me. I think it was a teaching um, agency and I can't delete it and I keep complaining to LinkedIn. There's nothing on it, but it's just my name and uh, I want it taken down. So I'll have to get on with them. LinkedIn is um, brilliant for, for self-branding. It's, it's basically Facebook for work. So people get a little bit intimidated by it sometimes and think, oh, I don't know what to post or I wouldn't know who to connect with. And I can't connect with them because, you know, I once, um, I don't know, spilled my coffee on them in a meeting or something like that. Don't worry about it. Get yourself out there. Make as many connections as you can. I've got a load of connections because I worked for trade and specialist magazines and I ended up going to a lot of conferences in these massive halls like... Um, the Excel Centre and the NEC and everyone you meet gives you a business card and has a little chat with you and says oh look at, find me on LinkedIn so I, I am connected with a lot of people who I might never it might not be relevant I might never do business with them or I might never work with them but they know people as well so if I'm looking for something um, or I'm offering something and they share it, then you just, you never know who you can see. So get as many connections as you can. Um, link up with people, you know, here who you know as well. You can link up with me. I absolutely will link up. Um, so we're going to start, we're going to just go through sort of creating a, a, a good basic profile. Try and get a picture of your face up there and quite a close picture of your face so that people can see you because again it's all about the personal branding you want people to recognize you and um, for cover cover image uh try and get the right size because it's a really narrow cover but then when you go on that's on a computer the, the the screenshot that i've taken 
So when you go on your phone, it's going to crop off the sides. So put whatever is important if you want to, to do a graphic. Um, put anything important right in the middle because it's just going to get cut off on a phone. If you want to, if you're really looking for people to connect with you um, and you want them to ring you or email you or uh, go on your website, then I would put up here your on, on your cover picture, your contact details, because LinkedIn has a little bit of a thing where it wants you to use its messaging service, basically. It's like Messenger. So you can do that, um, but it's a bit stilted. So I would rather sort of people got in touch with me. So you, if, if you want to, you could put your, your details up there. I've got them all on my, my business page, but for my personal page, I've just gone, gone with the logo. Um, we, we, we're going to just have a look at how you will look, and this is a snippet, the one with Sally Leslie Golding on. When people scroll through their posts, like they scroll through a feed on Facebook, on LinkedIn, they're going to see this, your picture in a little circle, um, name, whether you're following them or not, and then they're going to see one line of information. Um, so that information has got to be about 10 words or less, I would recommend. Some people go for a straight, like this lady's got a job description of what she does, because that's that's her role. She wants to, to, to meet people who are interested in, in her sort of... Um, in her career i've put something like um telling stories about brilliant businesses or boosting brilliant businesses because it, it i wanted to be a little bit more of, of a of a sort of personal uh, a personal tagline and this tagline is quite important because when with personal branding this tagline you can use everywhere you can use it on your website your business card, uh, your leaflets, even just in conversation when people say, oh, hi, what's um, your name? And you tell them, and then you can say, well, I'm Vicky, I'm going to help um, small businesses to shout about what they do. So if you've got a little tagline, it just really helps to succinctly say what you do very quickly. Uh, and then you can elaborate more in your about section. So you can, uh, I would create like quite a captivated intro on the about, so make it a little bit, um, you know, a bit catchy and dramatic. You know, I've asked a question. That's always a good way to get people engaged as well. Um, and think about your business pitch, you know, think about what you would tell people in a networking meeting if you just had 30 seconds to speak try and sum it up and then underneath I've gone into a little bit more detail into a description um so there should be plenty on there for people are still reading by the time they get to the bottom there should be plenty on there for them to, to find out about what I do um let's go to the next one and then if you've got a business or, or a, um, a branding, like um, perhaps you are just starting out, but you want to, to um, have a little bit of a, a play around with your brand, I would recommend creating a separate business page. Um, and it will appear later in that work section under the, the nine squares. So it's basically like um, a, a landing page for your, for your, for your website, uh, for your business. So I will use your logo in there, um, get, get your contact details on your cover image. And the cover image for your business page is a different size to your cover image for your personal page as well, which is a bit of a pain. But if you go onto Canva um, and type in LinkedIn, business page cover I think it will bring up the right size but if not they're on they're on this slide here and it does tell you in links in when you're trying to order picture it'll tell you what size you should do it at um, then use this page to post up your business activities like um I've been showing this event I've got a networking event tomorrow 
Um, I've got I've done sort of customers like customer testimonials on there. Um, if if you can get a customer to take a picture of what you've done or with them selfies with them and that kind of stuff, all of that, anything to do with with your business, get it on here, and then you can post that on your personal page. You can share that to your personal page to keep the, your followers uh, the followers of you in the in the loop about about what you do. If anyone's got any questions, by the way, just uh, just fire away at this point. So your, your personal page should be exactly that, personal. Sorry for uh, the, uh, the image, Annie, but I thought this was about as personal as you can get on LinkedIn. Um, you should speak from the heart and be honest, and your personal page is the place where, you know, we were talking about your beliefs uh, and your values. This is where, and your passions, the, this is where it's going to come through on your personal page. Keep things positive if you can, but address any concerns and setbacks, you know, as long as you're not slating anybody or being like really negative about things, then I think that's fine. Don't be too formal. Don't worry too much about your spelling and grammar because we're all human. Um, and if you procrastinate, you just end up not posting anything. So uh, Grammarly can help you. If you look at the website, um, Grammarly, it's free again, and you can sign up with your Facebook account or an email. And it basically is like a spell check, but on speed, it's like amazing at picking up any errors. It will suggest different ways for you. If you if you said like, oh, I've got a really big project coming up, it'll say big is an you know, overused word. Why not try gigantic or humongous? So it will it will really help you to improve writing. And, and I have Grammarly up all day on my desktop at work. Um, I, I make sure that before I post any copy on um, online or uh, you know, when I'm doing shifts for papers and things like that, I always make sure that I copy the text into Grammarly, give it a good spell check um, and then post it back into where it's going. So this guy is Craig and he's actually a double glazing salesperson um so the post has got nothing to do with double glazing but he's talking about reality and social media and sort of the pressures on on people to look perfect on on socials and it's a good example of how you know none of us is perfect so you know just um just embrace your humanity your humanness so don't let social media warp your, your reality. These are the pictures of him sort of before and after, literally a shower. So that's all he's done. He's um, said perfections, like promoted so much on socials. As you know, everybody wants to look like they've got the perfect body and face and the best lifestyle. But everybody knows, you know, everyone's got problems as well and, and issues and worries. So, you know, you can talk about them as well. So he's he posted this up on um, LinkedIn and he's got really good engagement with it because it's a human story. It's not a business story. It's, he's not saying, come by my double glazing. I've just done this job for somebody and they're really happy with it. it. It's about him as a person. And this is the sort of content on LinkedIn in particular, which is getting the most engagement so you've got two parts to LinkedIn. You've got your business page, if you want to have a business or professional page, and then you've got your personal page, and these should sort of reflect all the different sides to that. Okay, so... Um, we've got some post ideas here, and after this, I'm going to ask you to write a post, um, if you just do it on, on your notepads. So bear in mind what you want to get across to, uh, on your next post. So this goes for all socials, really. Um, if you're doing it on Twitter, obviously, you've got a word count, so you're going to have to really rein in the number of words that you're using. So first of all, I identify your audience for each post. Some sometimes you well most people or businesses will have sort of three or four different types of audiences. So for me, I've got 
um, my existing clients, uh, potential clients. I've got sort of partners and collaborators like Flourish, um, who, who I'm going to do work with or I might be networking with and sort of other stakeholders as well, like in the wider community who just want to, to support me or might recommend me. So think about your audience for each post and when you've got your audience in your head, so I'll say, oh, this one's for potential clients because I need some more potential clients on, on my books. So I'm going to keep that in my head when I'm, when I'm writing. I'm going to tailor the content exactly to them um, by sort of referring to them as and thinking about them like how, how you set up a new business or perhaps you need a new logo and really think about who I'm speaking to in that post because if it relates to them they'll keep reading it if it doesn't relate to them they've already got a logo then they'll just scroll past which is fine but I want to get to, into the psyche of the person who needs this new logo <laughs> So keep to the point and use any extra information or things that you think, oh, I should mention this and I should mention that. Keep them for your next posts. That's more content. Um, keep uh, very post content as well, different types of posts. And see Neil Patel. He's got um, a blog up called 101 Content Ideas. This blog post is really good. It, it, it sort of gives you some inspiration about what to post up so for, for me I tend to post up sort of um testimonials um events networking stuff uh, shares I share a lot of other people's stuff which is relevant which helps to build your community more I'll look after um questions as well like have you ever used this or could you use help with that um and the problem and solution posts do really really well so if you're addressing a problem like if i say oh like me instagram one for example i've, I've put a post up saying oh, are you struggling with instagram um is it does it make your hair tear out it tear your hair out you know are you, you know you need to be on it but you're not sure where to get started then come on to one of my instagram training sessions so, and then I go through what we'll learn on the session. So you've addressed, I'm addressing a problem that people might have, my, my clients might have, and I'm offering them a solution. And that is how you get people to contact you. Uh, stay positive. I always try and stay positive on my social media because I just think if I've got a negative thing to say, I'd rather just say it to a friend or a colleague or you know somebody that I know in private he's, he's, I don't like the wind you post on, on Facebook and and you might you might have something to say about an issue or something negative that's sort of bugging you but if you've got to think your followers are they going to want to see that that negativity I personally don't think so um highlight other people's achievements as well really big up your, your your crowd because if you're giving out to them then they're going to give back to you so really help boost each other especially with the the women in the field come on girls we've got to stick together and these are my seven posts must have for, for, for standout posts so this is what i want to have a look at um, on your notebooks now so hopefully you've been inspired to to write a post on on your social media um it doesn't matter if you're not on any social media just we'll just write it anyway and it, it'll be good practice so i would try and get my logo and branding on there if you haven't got any personal branding yet then that's fine try and get your face on it instead um or as well as if you if you want to have a look at branding, get get onto Canva, um, and you can get templates for logos that you can create for yourself. Um, and I would just choose a color scheme of about four or five different colors, um, that sort of complement each other. Choose choose three different fonts: one for your headings, one for subheadings, and one for copy, and try and stick with the three fonts in all of your all of your uh, graphics 
then so that your logo or your brand is going to be on your photograph, basically, uh, your, your, your picture. So um, a headline or an impact statement is always good. So right at the first, very, the very first line is what people will see when they're scrolling through. They won't see your whole post until they click on and read more. So make sure that first sort of five or six words really count. Um, and sometimes if it's an event and I'll do it in capital letters and I'll put like Instagram training session this week or um, book book your Instagram training for X amount and just put that in, in caps on the top line. Uh, and then if people are interested in that, they're going to click through. And some people do it when they're doing those sort of personal stories, like um, the double blazing salesman. They'll they'll sort of just put on the on the top line like, um, oh, I had the 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 best day ever today, or it was kind of like, oh, I thought today was going to be terrible, but it turned out to be the best day of my life. That kind of, that those like little snippets of line that people are going to see, grab them in, grab them in. Um, don't forget to put your contact details in it. Um, that's kind of links to number five, the call to action. So if you've got a business page on Facebook, you can put the send message icon, uh, the send message button on. I usually do that. If you just want people to email you or go on your website, make sure that, that they know what how to contact you and try and pick try and pick one way so that they've got kind of a a, a definite place to go a channel to go to I, I, I work with some clients and they never check the social media messages so I always just put um, an automatic reply in the Facebook pages to say this this um, social media is not checked daily please call this number for an instant response or email this address hashtags uh, yeah really important the, Neil Patel, who I mentioned before, has got a really good site where you can do some keyword research. So my keywords are things like marketing, um, training, social media training, Belting Wigan. I always use my company name. You could use your, your full name if you if you're going um, for your personal branding. You, you ideally need to use about 30 hashtags and people, there's a lot of debate about how many hashtags you should use. Um, but this, I, I follow two girls, they're called the Two Lauras um, and they've got a really good social media management business and they've got a group on Facebook where all the social media manage, managers join and swap sort of advice and ideas. And the general feeling is that you can't have too many hashtags. Why would you not put them in? Because you might as well. And it doesn't really bother people because you just put them right at the end of your post. So they've read the post anyway. They're not going to read all the hashtags. It's just that if they search for something on the um, on the platform, then they just happen to pick up, search for that particular hashtag, then they're going to find your post. Or they're, they're probably going to find your post. So there's, a, there's also a really good uh, shortcut if you do the text replacement on your phone. Uh, on an iPhone, it's called text replacement and it's in your settings. You can do, you can write like a really long sentence so put all your hashtags on it and then you can create a, a text replacement shortcut. So if I type in hashtag BLT now, which is short for belt in, not the sandwich, then all my hashtags appear and I just press and all my hashtags are in. So don't waste time to typing out 30 hashtags or saving them on the computer. It's just a text replacement. Um, I, do you know how you get that on a, an Android? I don't know, no, but it's an accessibility thing. So if you Google um, accessibility and text replacement on Android, you, you should get some instructions up. Um, because it, it will save you time. Also, that's really useful for like your phone number, your email address, website, and any sort of common phrases that you like. We were talking about your tagline before. You could you could create one for your tagline. Just put tag hashtag tag, and then every time you type that, you, you, your little tagline will come up. Then brilliant, thank you. No worries. 
Um, I would advocate writing 100 words plus if you can. Uh, obviously, you can't do that on Twitter. You're going to have to just, read, you know, squeeze things in and use your ampersands and put your jam instead of January and all the rest of it, kind of shorten it down. Um, but on Facebook, LinkedIn and um, in Instagram, did I say that one? Facebook, LinkedIn and Instagram, there's no reason why you can't write at least 100 words. The more, the more you write, the better. I mean, people aren't really going to sit there reading it if it's uber long, but, but they might do if they're interested in that. So um, try and stick to that sort of between 100 and, and 150 words, which sounds like a lot, but actually it's probably about, I don't know, maybe 10 lines. And I usually separate each line with a return so that it's not all one block of text it's like a sentence a gap a sentence gap sentence gap uh, and then emojis like i think there, was, there was a time like a couple of years ago where everyone emojis were everywhere and people were using loads of emojis they've, they've sort of um, waned a little bit recently but they can be really really useful and they don't have to be the facey smiling ones they could be arrows um i use hearts quite a lot um we we i volunteer for a food pantry and we have the apples our logo so i use like green and red apples um i like the thumbs up one me personally for belting because i think belting is kind of like hey belting is great so i use the thumbs up one a lot it, you have a look through and obviously if they're relevant for your business then brilliant use them uh, it just breaks up the text a little bit and it makes it a little bit a little bit more eye-catching and um, interesting, really. So let's have, we're just going to have five minutes now. I'm going to turn off um, my camera. I think, Shelley, is that okay with you, if, if you're still there, Shelley? Um, I'll unmute, that would help. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'll, um, I'll also pause the video and um, and we'll be back in five minutes. So welcome back uh, to the second part of our self-branding workshop and I'll hand you over to Vicky. Thank you. Thank you. Hopefully you've all got a brew and uh, are suitably um, refreshed. So yeah, we, I just wanted to sort of um, give you a little bit of time now to have a go at, at writing a standout post. So um, you, you might not have time to do the first one, which is the sort of logo and branding picture uh that that could take you a while but if you if you just do the actual text part so um with a headline or an impact statement try and keep it to like seven words or eight words um don't do you use sort of 100 words this isn't in the right order i don't know why i've done it in this order but um about 100 words of of what you want to get across uh, it can be quite a personal one if you want it to be, or it can be something more sort of related to what you've done in work or a combination of the two. Um, make sure you put your contact details on it, which would be your call to action. You can have your contact details in, in your image if you don't want to include them in your actual post as well. That's quite a good tip. Um, and think of those hashtags. Um, you might not have time to do 30 today, but if you try and do sort of 10, um, a good way of getting hashtag um, sort of inspiration as well is to look at competitors or people that are doing the sim similar things to you. And you can really go into the nitty gritty and, and look at how many times these um, hashtags are being searched for on, on each platform so that you um you get your your team your hashtag team up and running but the main part is the is the hundred words really so i've i've got an example here that i've put up about um, on instagram about wordpress a wordpress training session which um you know, it could have been longer actually looking at it. So I've put my first line was thinking of getting a website, but want to manage it yourself question. So the question is really good for engaging um, people. They want to read the answer, don't they? So they'll read one a little bit more. Um, we can help build the site to use to your brand guidelines. 
and train you on how to update it. So the words like you um, and me are really good for getting on a level with people rather than saying like um, your company or a biz but we can train businesses or we can train staff. If you, if you can use the word you and your and, and us and we, they're a lot more personable. Um, so there are no expensive update fees, just refresh the content at your leisure and pay WordPress directly for hosting. Um, and then I've put a little bit more info. This requires two to four hours training, depending on the makeup of the site, includes e-commerce sites. And then I've got some hashtags, my general hash, uh, BLT hashtags. And then I've also stuck a couple of extra ones. So I've got hashtag WordPress, uh, web skills, DIY websites, belting, belting Wigan, marketing business, social media, Wigan business and inspiration. But I should have put training on there as well. I don't know why I didn't put training on there. Um, it's also worth noting as well that on in Instagram and Facebook and LinkedIn, you can go back in and edit your post. And if you think, oh no, I forgot to put this in, usually just there's three dots somewhere next to your post that you can click on and and make the changes. Some people that haven't used that before, and then um, it's it's worth knowing that. But you can't do that on Twitter once it's out there. It's out there. Um, I think you can add pictures to a tweet. I'm not sure, but. And you can always delete it if it's something absolutely yeah. diabolical and you need just re delete it and redo it. Yeah, delete it. Or if I've if it's just like one typo or something, sometimes I'll just put in the comments or I meant such thing, not such thing. But yeah, and that, yeah. that takes you back to your point about being human and personal. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, it's, there's so many people, you know, make mistakes and it, it's just human, isn't it? We're, we're writing all day and... Absolutely. Yeah, it's gonna happen, especially if you've got sausage fingers like me and you're on a on a tiny iPhone. Right. Does does anyone wants to read out their post to us so that we can sort of um have a couple of examples maybe? Don't be shy. <laughs> I, I can read mine, but I've not finished yet. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, go for it. So I said, um, are you, are, I'm typing it in LinkedIn at the moment, but it's a bit annoying the way LinkedIn doesn't do spell check. Yeah, so you'd, you could do it in Grammarly and then yeah. copy and paste it in, but it's a bit awkward on your phone. But yeah, definitely on a laptop. Can I put Grammarly as an extension then on my toolbar or something? Yeah, you can. You can make it a, a browser, a toolbar on your browser. So if you're using links in on your browser, I'm not sure whether it'll work or not. Um, but if it doesn't, you can just copy it and paste it in and leave the two tabs up at the same time. Okay, fine. So I said, are you looking for fun, engaging and creative workshops for your pupils? Then look no further. We have been making a difference to young people's lives for the past 17 years and deliver a vast array of creative workshops covering everything from fashion to dance, entrepreneurship to personal development, beatboxing to skateboarding, and that's as far as I got up to. Yeah, yeah, good. Good, that's really a good start. Um, you, you're getting in lots of deep keywords and details that people are going to be searching for. And then I was going to do a call to action then. Mm -hmm. after that I don't know say something like uh please check out the website or drop us a line or something like that yeah yeah get, get in touch um some some platforms um are a bit funny about if you put sales speaking so if you say like ring now to book and that kind of thing so a lot of social media managers are doing it in, in a different way like putting the contact details on the picture for example or just saying message us, uh, send a message so that they haven't got like a phone number or email on. Personally, I, I don't think if, if you've got an account where you've not got 
a billion followers, you know, if you've just got sort of 100 followers and you, you or 200 and you just want to keep in touch with them, I don't think Facebook's going to kick you, you know, down the algorithm because you put a phone number on. But it may be just, yeah, contact us or send a message and then they can go into your page to find out the okay. details. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You might yeah. be coming on to talk about this a bit, Vicky, but, um, you know, with there's only so many hours in the day and there's only so many platforms you can be across. It's really worth just spending a bit of time finding out where your audience is. So in your mm. case, Sissy, um, having you might know this already, but having worked in education a bit, teachers don't use that LinkedIn that much, um, mm. but they love Twitter. You know, edgy Twitter is massive and there's a really, really good platform for engaging. There's all sorts of people doing interesting things there. Um, so, yeah, whatever your audience is, find out where they operate most and you can focus your efforts there. Yeah, definitely. That's a good point. It, it's really hard to maintain all four social media outlets regularly. So I'd probably get on to all four in the first place so that you've at least got your details up there and a contact just in case someone searches for you on that platform. And then you find um, you'll get more engagement on one or two of the different platforms or even, you know, three of them if you if you're getting really good engagement on all four then go for it <laughs> but that's another good tip actually canva um if you get the canva pro you can ta- you can um create images graphics and the post and it links to your facebook twitter instagram and linkedin as well uh, and i think some other platforms so you can schedule that content then to go out when you want it to go out it needs to be one image per platform but you can just copy copy them and make a new file um and then schedule it so you can block posts so maybe if you spend like one day a week or every two weeks or something just scheduling out all of your posts for that that couple weeks then that will save you a bit of time um and i i I prefer camera just because it does all the different platforms Forms, whereas um, some some scheduling tools only do certain platforms or they charge you quite a bit of money to add them on. Good. That's a really good one, Sissy. Thank you for sharing it. Um, does anybody else want to share a post? People could also type... Um into the chat if they prefer to do it that way yes good idea copy and paste it into the chat if you don't if you don't want to read it out um I th- one um good way of also building um visibility oh we're, we're going to go through visibility in a minute but if, if you've got a whatsapp group shelly going on for the time to grow we do um, yeah yeah so we in our WhatsApp group because we set up a time to grow when um, when we started ours in two thousand. We'll put our links in there and just say, "Ladies, please, um, can you share this?" Um, and I've got one for my clients as well, like a little client group where we don't talk, we don't chat on it. We just have um, just post links up, and it's like a visibility group so that people can, so that you post don't get lost in in feeds and stuff and we give each other a bit of a boost by liking and, and sharing if it's relevant as well so something else that um, we i find really useful is um is asking for help as well as offering help and solving people's problems um yeah. so you're looking for partners in this area or you want to know um how to connect with people in this area just go and ask and people love to help on social media and you can say, even if you don't know, you just say, who should we be talking to about this thing that we're working on? And it's a great way of networking and starting to find the people out there who are working on similar things and uh, you know, building your reach that way. Definitely. I yeah. don't feel that, that you're being cheeky for, for asking uh, because pe- if people want to help you, they will they will help you. And, uh, and like you say, we, we help each other a lot in that group. We do. It's really supportive. Um, and I have got that on this very slide, actually, Shelley, about asking people. Um, so, so to build your community up, you, you know, uh, it, community online is, um, it, it can be difficult to build up because you've got your page up there, you've got your images, you've got really nice branding, you might even have a website, 
but to get people to engage with you week on week on week is difficult so the 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 biggest tip that I can give you is post put some posts up try and post every day if you can if you can try and put some time aside every week so that you're putting at least one or two things up a week uh, just do it, you know, like on the train or, you know, maybe while you're waiting for pasta to cook or something like that. If you just think, oh, I've just got five minutes, um, try and dedicate it to, to your socials and get something up. Um, Marie, have you got a question? Uh, yeah. My question is more, um, well, I'm a writer and... Um, my question, since it's still a part of you know, advertising, is about the back page of a book I intend to publish. So I wanted to read the little thing I put there and for you to tell me if you think that's uh, good enough to get somebody, you know, attention or, you know, curiosity. Can I read it? Yeah, yeah, go for it. Okay. So I said... So I said, if you think you had it, okay, sorry, the book first of, first of all is going to be like a poetry collection about the roller coaster of emotions. So I said, if you, if you think you had it rough, you are definitely not alone. If you, had good, if you had lots of good times, compare them to mine. Embark on this roller coaster and enjoy the ride. If it's too much for your little heart, take a breath, uh, then hop back on. When you reach the end, and I trust you will, I'll be there, all eyes and ears, yearning for your juicy feedback. Yeah, that's good. That's good. See, that is that kind of writing that you can that you can use in your posts and in your or if you've got a website or blog. It's that kind of sort of engaging writing that that's going to get people interested, isn't it? So, yeah, that's good, Marie. Thank you for sharing it. Um. That's really good. So yeah, be inventive as well. Be be inventive. Be creative. So, um, but we're, we're building the community. So uh, always start by sort of connecting with people that you already know. And it's surprising how many people you know locally, even people who live on your street or who are in your clubs or all the mums at school and um, kind of ex colleagues get connected with them um because like i said before if even if that you don't think that you're going to do business with them or or that they're going to be interested in what you do they might know somebody who is and if they see your stuff and tell somebody oh my well, somebody i used to work with does that now getting you know give them a ring passing on names and referring it it's happening all the time um increase your reach by tagging people in and this is one thing that I keep forgetting to do so I need to remind myself to do this every time you post something it's probably relevant to somebody who you know or who follows you and even if it's um if they don't sort of engage with you like for example um the we have a the food pantry here in Shevington so if I'm posting a Twitter post for them I always try and remember to tag in like local schools, um, uh, counsellors, um, fo the football club and the rugby club because they have kids who go there and there's parents, you know, involved with them. Um, and they will often just give it a like and a, re and a retweet. So it really is worth tagging people in because they might miss your post otherwise. So try and remember to do that. You can flourish, you know, I'm sure I would advocate you tagging them in to social enterprise related stuff that, that, that um, you want to share. You can tag me in as well if it's, you know, about your marketing or anything like that, or if you want to tweet about this session or um, any information or advice that I might have given you, go for it, tag me in and I'll retweet you. Um, and the, the philosophy basically is this give us gain philosophy that I learned on a, a networking session. So give us, give us gain is all about like, if you give something to people, even if it's just a little bit of something, then they are more likely to want to engage with you and help you in the future and give you something back as well. So 
commenting you can give it by commenting on people's posts liking them sharing them um and always try to reply so if if you've got a good post going and um you've got a few replies on it and you've replied to them but you noticed oh nobody's shared it though people just liked it but i'd really love them to share it then just send somebody a little private message and just say oh would you mind sharing that on your business page or um retweeting it for me um because you know I, I want more people to see it if that is that okay and then they'll probably likely in a couple of weeks text you back and say oh do you mind retweeting this for me or send you a link and it's reciprocal isn't it uh, always try to reply to someone's comment as well I've noticed on LinkedIn especially it's quite bad manners if you don't uh, do that so if someone's commented on um, a post and they've said oh I really like this thanks thanks for sharing it then just a little quick comment like oh thanks very much I thought it uh, it was time to share this or I thought that you might be interested in it um, and just try just try and reply and it keeps that momentum going with your conversation you can might ask them a question then and say oh thanks for replying I'm glad you like it have you um got have you ever found that you know you you've um had a bad day or have you ever found that you've had a trouble with a plumber or whatever you your um your post is about try and continue that conversation on on your own posts um a really good way of, of building your community, and this is something that I'm going to do next, it's next on my list, is to create a group on Facebook um, and invite your, sort of your inner circle. So it's not just going to consist of people who randomly see posts on Facebook. It's going to be people who are engaging with you, so you sort of your internet faves, you know, the people who are um, really going to post and comment um or buy from you if, if it's a customer based one so anyone who you think who will su support your business invite them to the group you can do that quite easily on facebook if they're your friend um if they're not your friend you can send them a little message um on messenger or even put it sort of on an email so if you if you if you're sending out emails we're going to look at emails in a little bit as well then ask people to join this private group uh, i know some people who do this really really well Ju julie's got one haven't you julie green for um my Book's baby and uh debbie marsden's got one too so how do you find your group julie do you think it gets more engagement than your page yes definitely um I, I've probably got double the number of people in my group that are following my page. Um, and I've found that really with, sorry, I'll just put my camera on a minute and I've got it turned off. Um, yeah, I've found that with both of my businesses um, that the groups do get a lot more engagement than the pages now. Yeah, yeah I think definitely. It's like, it's like a safer space, isn't it? It's a bit more private. Yes. Yeah, because I know like with my My Bump to Baby group, what I wanted to do with the group was have it as like a, a community space for families and businesses, um, but for families to be able to go in there and ask questions, you know, that they might find difficult just putting on their own Facebook profile and yeah. didn't really want to be, you know, there were questions that they didn't want to get judged on. Um, so, yeah, the group does work really, really well. Yeah. Good, good. And I, I do think it is the way forward because um, I think posts sometimes can get a little bit lost in it. If, if people follow like hundreds of pages, it's difficult if they haven't already been engaging with you to get it seen. But if you can hook them into a group straight away, then they're much, much more likely to get shown posts and notifications, aren't they? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I know a couple of my business contacts who who have them, like Debbie Debbie Marsden, who's got um, a dress making business. Well, it's like um, clothing for children, babies. She's she's got thousands of people in that group, and then every time she launches a new product, she tries to give them a little bit extra. The people in the group, so she'll always give them like 
um, a special offer code or a competition. Um, and, and she sort of offers modeling opportunities for the kid, for babies and kids and that, uh, and they get free clothes. So it's a really good little community going on. And then you're more likely to get people to, to buy off you, but also to tell their friends about your business as well. Uh, you can be a bit more chatty as well in your group, and especially if, you, if you're dealing with subjects that are a little bit more sensitive, like we talked about DV before, um, or, you know, like emotional issues or menopause or things that people might not particularly want to discuss, like like Julie said, on the on a public group or in the fit on their own profile, then it's a nice way to get to get people to feel a bit safer. Uh, as long as you make the rules clear, you know, like no screenshotting um, within the group and keep things quite nice and private in that case. Make sure you've got good rules up there. I've I set up a group for, the, for local mums called WN6 Mums in my area. And that's that's got about 5,000 members now. And that, that's over sort of the space of about 10 years and it is a public group, so you can see the posts publicly and share the posts. But you've got to answer some questions to come into the group so that I know that they're not like scammers or businesses that aren't related to families and that kind of thing. So that that works as well. It just gives you a little bit of a filter on who comes into the group. Um, yeah, so these are the people who are gonna gonna really support you in the future. And then this is where I've moved on to sort of um, email addresses. So there is a lot of rules about who you can email and what you can email to them. And it's all um, under the GDPR um, legislation. You might remember that coming in about, it's about five or six years ago now. So there used to be pretty much no no rules on emails. You know, you could just email anybody. And this, weirdly, it doesn't apply to postal uh, mail. You could post anything through anybody's letterbox. But if you want to email them, particularly if it's a personal email rather than a work email, there are lots of rules about that. Um, so you need to register with the ICO if you want to do um, emailing. But basically, if you've got a business and you're holding people's information in any way, shape or form, if you're holding phone numbers, names, addresses, email addresses, dates of birth, any information about people, you should register with the ICO. And it, this is a body that sort of governs um, information in in Britain, it costs money. It's about forty pounds a year to be a member, but it gives you the the training then on um, GDPR, and it helps you to understand like data breaches, um, what to do if you've got a question, that kind of thing. Um, but if you can start building up your email list of customers or people who were sort of engaging with your contacts, then it's a, it's a really good way to keep in touch with people is to send them out a, a, a newsletter every now and again. And it drives traffic to your socials as well on your website. So that's something to consider. Um, Vicky, can I ask a quick question? Yes. Um, with the social side of things, you know, you were saying you have a group and you ask questions, try to avoid scammers, etc. Do you yeah. have some any kind of liability on social media if something does go wrong in a group that you're admin for or something like that? I I would just put on the rules uh, at the top of the uh, um of the page that people have to sort of agree to and i would put something along the lines of your comments and um your comments are attributed to you we take no responsibility for for the comments made in this group and i would also put like we are i have one about sales because yeah. people try and sell stuff to each other and sometimes it falls through while they sell it to the person who didn't answer first and and it gets a little bit heated sometimes. So I just put on one of my rules that they have to sort of tick is um, we don't accept responsibility for selling, buying and selling. And I've put, this is not eBay. <laughs> so, okay, so it kind of disclaimer it, and then you're all yeah. right. Yeah, totally. And I think there's so many different social media groups now and 
pages that it would be really difficult to 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 sort of hold the admin responsible in in, in sort of court. So so I wouldn't be be too worried about that. People are responsible for what they post, aren't they? Okay, thanks. Yeah, and, uh, and obviously if anyone's getting argy bargy in your group, then you can ban them. Um, and if you've got a page and people have posted negatively on your page, you can ban them from your, from your page and you can also hide the comments. So even if they just like said something a little bit ropey, but you still want them to follow your page, you can just hide their comments so they can see it. So they think it's still there, but nobody else can see it. So that's quite a good one for them. Um, okay, yeah, yeah. Then they, then they won't send angry emails saying, oh, well, why have you banned me from your page? Yeah. Um, but generally, I found it really positive, actually, on um, on Facebook and, uh, and on more social media, really. It's very, very positive in general. Um, so previous achievements so so these are the things that can help feed into your content into your post when you're thinking about what to post um and i looked at this a little bit last week in a session that i did about kickstarting your career so think about the things that you want people to know about you so you work experienced where you've it might have been years ago it might have been something that you did you know, in school, but you want to highlight the fact that you really enjoyed it and it set you on your path or whatever, you know, don't discount things because they happened a long time ago. Um, you're volunteering if you've done any. If you, if you haven't, I would recommend it. It's a really good way to meet new contacts and get gain new skills and just feel good that you've sort of helped society, even if you just do it for a few weeks or months. Um, try, and, try and get involved. Parenting, uh, yeah, you've, lots of people have had gaps in employment because they've had um, time off for work, especially women. So you can highlight the fact that you've been a parent and that you've had, you know, responsibilities. And we, we'll look more at soft skills in a minute. But just because you've had a gap in work, it doesn't mean that you haven't been building your skills at all. Um, caring for elderly relatives, perhaps. Um fundraising if you've got any fundraising experience even you know your PCFA or um charity maybe you've done charity runs and that kind of thing you, you've got some fundraising experience that's really good to, to sort of highlight um any awards that you've that you've won on been nominated for um that's the goal Oscar coming soon and um any feedback as well that you get from people. So comment, comments, thank you letters. Um, if it's not online, I would ask people if you can put it online and you can also anonymize it as well so that it's just like a clap from, from a client. People don't tend to, to, to bother too much if it's anonymized and I'm sure they'll understand why. But if it's on Google and it's in their full name or it's on Facebook, then share away. I, I usually put it into a little graphic on Canva. So it's in my branding colours and there's my logo on there and um, the, just the title, like client feedback. So all these um, sort of achievements, this is, this is how it could go into your content um if, from work experience for example you might have photos from the time that you were you were doing it you, you might have throwback pics so you, you might say oh throwback to year 2000 when I was volunteering in Africa or something like that you know it's really worth um mentioning what you've done in the past even the the, the distant past um, you can tag in the people or organisations that were involved in that experience to get them engaging with you. Um, you can use special occasions and national days of awareness to get involved. A lot of people did Valentine's Day posts. Some, some were about, you know, being single, loving yourself and love or, or some were about, you know, remembering to you know, appreciate the people in your life or there were lots of different ways that you could spin that. 
Uh, and the same goes for all special occasions, doesn't it? And I always tell people, if you've got a big special occasion coming up like Christmas and um, your business is doing a special offer or perhaps summer holidays and you want to aim it at children, then try and plan that in advance, how, you, how you're going to to market that and schedule it in advance so it doesn't come upon you and you think, oh, no, I haven't posted anything. Um, if you get, get things scheduled in advance, then you'll be ahead of yourself a little bit. There is a calendar online as well of National Days of Awareness and there are hundreds. So whatever you do, there will be sort of four or five events a year that you can get involved in. Um, fundraising, yeah. Um, if, you've, if you've won a bid or you've uh, managed to raise some funds, then um, that's really worth shouting out about. And the people like the National Lottery, if you ever get funding from them or... Um, you know the supermarkets or anything like that they will always appreciate um, a tag and some of them actually ask you like if we get a, a, a community grant from the Wigan Council they will ask us to put their logos on and um, not just their logos but where their funding came from so like the um, European funding that kind of thing so so they, they will ask you to include their logos and, and mention them Um. If you are looking for awards, and you can self-nominate for lots of awards, which is something that um, I didn't really know, but you don't have to wait around for somebody else to do it. So nominate yourself or ask a friend or a colleague to do it. You might just get shortlisted, you never know, you might win. Um, and for the feedback, ask, and it comes back again to what Shelley was saying before about um just ask him for help if you've got a customer who's, who's happy um ask them to leave a review i'd i text somebody um last week because or a couple of weeks ago now i went on yell.com and i've listed my business on yell and i didn't have any reviews and I, and some of my competitors didn't either in the, in our area so I, I texted one of my favorite clients and said alex please can you leave me a review on, on yell um, and because we've been working together and um, we've done some good work together, he said, yeah, of course, well, and he left me a really good review, which then I could have won over the competitors on Yale.com, but I could also use that in um, in the graphic, which I've put out on social media, and I've got a testimonials carousel on my website as well, which um, has got like six or seven examples of feedback. Facebook's so, another good one for reviews, isn't it, Vicky? You can get people yeah. to give you reviews and review. Once you've got the review, you can then paste it across your different platforms, like Vicky said. Yeah, definitely. Facebook, Google review as well. They're really important because Google, Google's like an, another social media platform that you need to consider, really. And so even if you haven't got a website, um, you can get on Google My Business, even if you know self-employed as yourself, and and uh, register yourself on Google My Business, and then when people are searching for you, they'll know that it's a verified by Google Business, and and they um, might not even be searching for you. Might they might just be looking for something in your area, and then you appear on the map as well. Yeah, that's yeah. a really valuable one, and you you're in complete control of um, how you're listed there as well. Yeah, and I think it's something like sixty percent of searches for products in in and services are geography related. So they'll say plumbers in Wigan or plumbers in my area, and that is massive because if you're not on Google My Business, then it doesn't really know about you. It will it will show up socials on Google, of course. They're really um, they come up really high in the Google search, but you might as well for free get on Google My Business and, and use that. You could post up um, events, offers. It's really quite good. Videos, it's it's definitely worth um, utilising that and utilising your, your reviews as well, yeah. Um, so, yeah, we, so sometimes, uh, sometimes we need to turn a negative and a positive into a positive as well. So, um, like we were talking about those gaps in employment, um, we talked a bit last week about how gaps in your employment mean that you've actually been using your soft skills a lot because if you've been parenting, you've been using your organisational skills, um, you've been, you know, by doing the shopping or the meal planning, you may have been transporting children around the place, you're responsible, um, 
you know, you've got all of these soft skills that come out of, of different roles and they don't have to be in the workplace. So yeah, going into soft skills a little bit deeper. Um, so for example, this one soft skill, uh, organizational skills. So if you've got good organizational skills, it doesn't matter what job you're in, you're gonna be able to hit the ground running and uh, you know kick ass a lot quicker if you've got really good organizational skills. So I've used some examples of where you might have, have you use your, your organization skills in everyday life. Um, it can be literally anything, even traveling. We were talking about going on holiday, you know, how much organizing does going on holiday take? And that it, that is massive because you've got to apply for your passport, maybe if you're going abroad, you've got to get tickets, transport, money, hotel, everything. But it, it's huge. So try and think about the examples of where you've used those soft skills and, and bring them into your posts uh, and your content. People can see that you've got these skills, then it makes you much more a uh, sort of attractive to work with, basically. And so I've got yeah, communication skills. You've if you're basically on this call, you've got good communication skills because you can already, you know, you're using um, video conferencing, aren't you? It, you've got digital skills from emailing as well. You might have a website, or you just use websites and apps. Um, everything that you do on your social, it's all communication and, and digital skills. Um, approachability, I've put people often ask me for help or advice. I'm a local parish councillor here in Shevington, so people often ring me up and tell me about um, disputes with neighbours or overhanging bushes or whatever, and then I sort of signpost them to, to the right place or put in... Um, put in um, um, a complaint on the app, a sort of report on the app for them. Um, and that makes me more approachable uh, that people know then business-wise, you know, that they can approach me. Teamwork, it, you might play sport. If, you, if you're in a team, literally in a team, then you've, you've, got, you've shown that you've got that skill. Um, working with people, colleagues, partners, um, volunteering again comes up all the time because that's massive to, um, amount of teamwork usually as you volunteer with people um, and working independently as well so if you've done any studying or even stuff like housework and running the house you're usually doing it independently um, DIY skills I've put as well because you know crafty you you need to be able to use your initiative and uh, have some common sense and know-how. So that's always a good skill to get in there too. Uh, I think I put driving as well at some point. So if you do drive and you've got a driver's license and it's relevant to sort of what you want to do, then that can be um, a soft skill that you might want to highlight. Um, networking. So one, once you've got your, you know, your branding sorted and your socials are up and running um, we're going to look at websites and portfolios in a minute but networking is a really good way to, to make more contacts and get more followers on your socials and LinkedIn uh, and do business with people they there's loads of networking groups um, which are in real life or online so uh, eventbrite's a brilliant place to find them um but if you can try and attend regularly like make your face well known in, in your area with uh, by attending some of them are just for an hour or two hours some of them there's there's daytime ones nighttime ones online whatever suits you um it, it will help you find people who can help you and and you'll be able to help other people in there as well um and like we said with the givers gain philosophy if you're if you're in a, your first networking meeting and you say to somebody oh yeah i can put you in touch with them or oh i know um, a business that you might want to use then yeah you're helping 
Um, and then nurture these relationships because you will learn from people in those groups. You might learn what not to do as well so, so with some groups, but you might learn, um, you will learn lots of lots of tips on business, owning a business, running a business, getting a job, networking and, and skill, upskilling basically. So Flourish is you're already in touch with Flourish. So that's like a, the perfect network for, for me personally, because it's for it's for women. A lot of um some networking groups can be quite male orientated. So it's nice to be in a woman on the space sometimes. Um I've set one up called Proper Good Networking, which is we meet once a month online and once a month in person as well. Uh, and that's that is all the women, but not because we banned men, just because whenever we get a man coming, they're the only man in the room normally, and then they don't come back. <laughs> but we do welcome men as well. Fub Hub is one that's in Wigan. That is female only, and they're live again now. Um, they did go on Zoom in the pandemic, but they normally meet at the DW Stadium, and that's uh, it's £10. Mine's £5 um, uh, uh, to to join uh, to to come full pubs 10 um but it's a bigger group so there's probably about 30 women come to that each time and there's always a a couple of speakers on about local issues and so there'll probably won't be one in your area if you're not in Wigan just find out where where your nearest one is um We've got Professionals of Wigan as well, which is on a Friday afternoon, so I can never make it because it's right in school pickup time. But if you're around on a Friday afternoon, it's supposed to be really good, and then they finish in the pub. So, you know, what can you say? Shouts. Shout Network's quite quite big. I think it's nationwide. But they have um, lots of local meetings. And again, they're quite good with the speakers and, and they offer training as, as well, as, as do the FSB. The FSB is the Federation of Small Businesses. Um, you ha- I think you have to be a member and that's about £150 a year to join that on. Um, but they do offer some really good training in the FSB. So for your first year, especially in business, I would I would probably recommend joining FSB. They give kind of legal backup as well. Um, there are quite a few benefits with that membership. But yeah, get, get yourself on Eventbrite, have a look. Um, you might find industry specific networking groups, which are probably going to be nationwide, but um you know if you if if you join like the i don't know stone masons of britain uh, association then they will run networking groups so that you can meet like like-minded people um does anyone do know of any other networking groups that they've been to and sort of would recommend No, have a, have a look at the Facebook, Facebook as well, because if you're in a group um, with, with, you know, like, like-minded people or people in your trade, um, there, there might be the opportunity to, to start your own um, network, you know, get, get an event going, or even if it's just coffee or something like that, ask people, they're usually willing to meet up. Yeah, that's a great idea, Vicky. Especially if there's if there's nothing happening in your in your kind of sector and in your area, there's a really good opportunity there to get something going, isn't there? Yeah, definitely. And the more the more the better, really. And even if it if it only lasts for a few weeks or months, then at least you'll have made some decent contacts. Yeah. Um. So for websites, if if you um, fancy getting a, a website for your personal branding, then lots of people are doing this now. Even people who are not running their own business, they might be looking for a job, they want to get the CV on there and all their experience. A lot of photographers have them to showcase the work. Um, so a lot of self-employed people have them. So personally, I would re- recommend WordPress or Wix for a simple start. I like WordPress the best because 
it's quite simple. It's a really well used, uh, it's, I think it's the biggest platform for websites in the world at the moment. And there's lots of little plugins as well. So if you get um, a business subscription with them, it's about £240 a year, I think. But you can get the plugins with it then. If you don't want to pay that much, you can get a cheaper version, which will just, you can eat, still eat quite easily set up pages and a blog on there. Yeah, um, WordPress, you can get free templates, can't you? And uh, yeah. just to put in a, a little plug, we're actually running a session uh, specifically on WordPress, how to set up your own WordPress website on March the 15th, if anyone's interested in that one. Yeah, that is that with the village web yes. design. Yeah, Claire Worthington is brilliant. So I would, if you're thinking of getting a website, go for it. And even if you decide to set up the on the basic um cheaper subscription, you can then upgrade if you want to. So if say you got you, you wanted to put a shop on there or something like that, then you could upgrade to the business um package. You can you can get WooCommerce integrated into it, um, which will link up to all like Square and PayPal and whatnot. And you can, it can really evolve. So it can start off very very basic and cheap, and then you get as you get more expensive, you can do more things with your website then. And I think just to highlight the the, the point about um, the messages that the messages the websites that Vicky's mentioned here. Are there all ones that you can update? So I think a mistake that some people make at the beginning is they pay maybe a developer to build their website for them. And then every time they want to add some new content or update it or tweak it, they have to pay a developer again. And the ones that Vicky's mentioning here are ones that as long as you're reasonably okay using a computer, you can do all the updates yourself, which will save you a huge amount of money yeah. in the long run. Yeah, definitely. I think um, a lot of web developers um, are really taking the make really because they're charging thousands and thousands of pounds. And some of the websites are, yeah, it is time consuming to build your own website. But if you can learn how to do it, it will save you a lot of money. And at the end of the day, it, it depends what your business is really. But if you're happy with the basic website, some basic information, a um, couple of videos, maybe, and um, a blog, that that's all all you need really to get going. Um, if it, if you also, oh sorry, oh. I was going to say there's another halfway point, which is you pay um, a WordPress designer to put together the basic website and make it look all slick and beautiful. Or you know, there's Shopify, there's Wix, there's uh, Squarespace. But yeah. they're, once they've been made, it's down to you to do the updating, which is really straightforward. There's a really, what they call a WYSIWYG editor, which is what you see is what you get. So you literally type in title, you type in your text, you add a photo and it will update. So that's another another option as well. Yeah, definitely. I've, do, I've done that for some of my clients as well, because they, they're a bit funny about wanting to do the design bit. But then once they get going, they're, they're fine to update it. Um, but it Wix, I find really, really good. It's probably the easiest one to use Wix. It's just a bit glitchy. So if you've not got a really good um, sort of internet connection or laptop, a really newish laptop, it can be quite laboring to do your updates because it constantly updates. It does live updates, but it is super easy to use. So, so have a look and, and see what you think. Uh, and you can always change it, you know, you could always set up on one and then change it to another later. It's it's a bit of work to do, but if you've not got too many pages, then it's... Can I just add, add something about Wix? So I I use the Wix, Wix website and built my fashion label website on their, their platform, but I didn't yeah. sign up straight away. And I think they were offering like the business package is like £20 a month or something, and I didn't sign up. And then about a month, three weeks later, I got sent a deal to have the whole year, for the whole like two years for like £90 a year or something. Oh, so if anyone is thinking of using Wix to sell anything on, sorry, my video's not on. If anyone's using Wix to sell, then sign up and then just wait for that deal to drop into your email box and it'll drop in and they'll offer you the, the whole business suite for two years. It works out something like £9 a month or eight pounds a month or something, and it would have been like 20 odd pounds a month. That's a really good tip. That is, yeah, definitely try that one. And also there's some um, 
offer codes that you might be able to find online. And there is, for WordPress, there's, w, if you type in WP Beginners, I think it's called, or WP for Beginners, they run loads of blogs on how to update pages and you can do the tutorials on YouTube. But they also offer offer codes in the comments so that um, you can get like cheap plugins and, um, you know, you might be able to save yourself a little bit of money doing that as well. Um, so for page wise, I, I would just set about creating about three or four pages um, your home page is going to be your, sort of the, the landing page of um, where people get to first. So I'd probably make that the about you page or type in some basic information about you, get some text on there. Photographs are really important as well. Um, if you can, try and spend a little bit of money on a photographer. If, if you can, then your, your camera is going to take really good photos if you've got like a, a newish form if you're struggling to get the lighting right and whatnot try going outside because usually that's the best place to take pictures you're going to get exactly the perfect lighting or if you're inside make sure you, you're facing the light and the light that's not behind you and sitting the same outside as well um but if you can try and uh, spend a little bit on a photography even if it's just to get some digital images and then you've got them then for the for, for the next couple of years they're not going to outdate and you can do a lot with your photographs especially on Canva you can remove the background and um, you can put all the filters on um the, yeah if you've got some decent photos then that's that's the first place to start really um so you've got if you've got on your about your information on your front page and maybe contact details, you can put a form on there, for a contact form. It's all pretty easy to do. In the, and like Shelley said, it's like what you see is what you get. Block building blocks. So you just put in a block for the heading, a block for your picture, a block for um, a video or or whatever, and it's fairly simple to use. If you get stuck. You can just huge you can just Google and um, go on YouTube and watch the tutorial. And basically, I'm self-taught, so everything that I've put together has been because I've just spent ages looking around <laughs> WordPress, going, "Ah, oh, how do you do this?" And then eventually, just thought, "I'll just Google it." And then I've I've pretty much never come across anything that I couldn't do, or I've managed to find a way around it anyway if I couldn't do it. Um. So then. Blog posts. Um, if you if you're on WordPress, I'm not sure how Wix works with blogs, but if you're on WordPress, you can type a blog post in that then gets fed into the WordPress world of blogging, where people from across the world read blogs and it goes into various feeds and and um, that kind of thing. So you can put tags and categories in there that will help more people see blog posts. Um, they also get fed into a nice page where your newest blog comes in at the top. Um, if you want to pin a blog to the top, you can do that. So it's always at the top. If it's like the history of me and you want that to be the first one, you can um, pin that to the top of your blog. And, you, and on your home page or on other pages, you can bring in blogs that will show you a teaser of the blog. So you might have seen them on websites where they sort of scroll across with different blog posts coming through. Um, so your blog is your, your space basically to write, be creative and express all those things that, the, that we were talking about before about um, what's it called? Ikigu, I can't remember the name now so I probably uh, Ikigai probably, Ikigai, that's it um, you can bring all of these things that we were talking about, all your beliefs and your passions and your experience and your soft skills, everything into your blog. Um, if you've done some keyword research with um, like the hashtags that we were talking about before, and, and by keywords, it might be a key phrase. So it might be marketing in Wigan. That, that counts as a keyword, but really it technically is a phrase. Um, if you've got keywords sourced and you do a little bit of SEO research, it's dead simple. 
you're basically using the same keywords throughout your website um, you're putting them in things like headers um, in your web address for e for the blog post but if it's already in your title it will appear in your in the web address on a blog post and um, you're going to put keywords in the first paragraph and also in your dis meta description and a meta description is the little snippet of text that you see on google when you search for a page or an article and it'll bring up you know the blue heading where it's got the name the title of the page and then underneath it's got like a paragraph about what information is on that page and that's what's in your meta description so if you've got a keyword in your meta description that is relevant to the page and the content then google scores you highly so seo by the way stands for search engine optimization so that's all it is it's just trying to get the search engines to push your your website and your articles up the rankings and um, so yeah all the geography keywords business keywords brand names anything like that and uh, think things like posting links to other pages are good for SEO posting links to your uh, socials and you can get little icons on your page to do that um Linking from page to page within your website is brilliant as well, so that you can offer people more relevant content. If you want to read more about the time that I went on a training course, click here and you link, you're building up these this little web. It literally is like a spider's web of um, um, links between your pages and other pages on the internet. And the more of those links that you have, as long as they're not ridiculous, like you've got a million on your website or something, because that looks dead suspicious. If you've got some valid um, links on your website, then that will also push you up on the rankings. And it's Get your contact. Them, just Sorry. on the rankings, inbound links. So the links that other people, if the other people link to you, that's really powerful. So it's worth if you start getting clients or if there's people that you're partnering with who've got established websites, if you can ask them to link to you if you run something for them or if there's you know some relevance there, having that link from somebody else will again shift you higher up. Definitely. Yeah, I've got my clients on, on the website quite a bit and I've got the logos on there. Um, and yeah, I do try and link link to other people's websites. But if you go to Neil Patel and you can, Neil Patel's got this website called Uber Suggester, and and it, that's where the keyword suggestions come in. But you can find out where people have come to your website from, if and not not on Google, but on them um, from other websites as well. So it might be one link that somebody's posted to your website in a blog that is like donkey's years old but it's resulted in like hundreds of people coming to your website so it, it really is quite powerful that the link the link thing so yeah again it comes down to asking doesn't it if you can ask people to, to post your links in their website or write guest posts for them do collaborations like that um we i did a collaboration a bit with um debbie who does the um the children's clothing so she's really good on social media so i designed a poster for her she got it printed out in like a1 size it was massive then she put put a picture of herself in front of the pit poster and saying like thank you to vicky for designing this it's gone in all the gyms and um she posted that on her social media and then I posted reposted it on my social media and I had my my own pictures as well that I added to it and also all that cross promotion um that was just within social media that was basically like doubles you reach or trebles you reach even if they've got more than following so it's the same with websites if you can do a bit of collaboration by doing a guest post or a video with somebody a podcast I've just done a podcast with Alice from um, from Remade in Wigan, um, and we were basically talking about our businesses for an hour <laughs> and the social enterprises and that kind of thing. And it's dead good fun. We did it with a cup of tea and whacked it onto Anchor FM, and that goes on onto all the different um, 
podcasting platforms then. Uh, and yeah, that's another media, uh, another range of media for your website, which another another thing that Google loves, isn't it? Shelley having a big range of media. Oh yeah, absolutely. And we've got, we've got some podcasting sessions coming up, so make sure you look at those. Um, but also you can do it the other way around because if you're anything like me, it takes me forever to write a blog. And sometimes you spot a really good piece of writing and you think, oh, this is absolutely spot on, you know, the, the sorts of messages we want to be communicating or um, our audience would find this really useful. And so far, no one's ever said no to me yet. If you write to them and say, this is what we do, we'd love you to be a guest blogger on our website. Could we run this? And as long as you credit it all, um, people are often really happy to share their content, which means that you've got, you know, you've got more content in your website, which builds the value for your audience. Yeah, definitely. And like, um, if again, with the with the links, if you're linking back to their website as well, they're, they're getting a link out of it. Um, they're getting a bit of a reach. It's, an, it's a social media opportunity for them to share that, you know, they've been published on somebody else's website. So, yeah, it's worth approaching people and, and asking them for collaboration, definitely. Vicky, we've um, just got a question in the chat um, from yeah. Nikki saying, who do you use to host your websites? I just use WordPress. I do it all through WordPress because I just think if anything happens and I need some comeback, they're, con they're fully contactable. They've got a really good, on wordpress.com, not on .org, on, on the .com, because um, they're separate entities apparently. Uh, .com's got a really good help desk mm. and I've panicked a few times because I've not been able to do something. And yeah, it's got a live chat. That's good. Yeah, it, the live chat's brilliant and they sort your problem out. They'll go into your website, find out what's happened, tell you what's going on and offer you advice or they'll fix it. So, so I and always... And they host your domain as well as your website? Yes, yeah. They can, and they can transfer it from other companies. I have used Bluehost in the past as well because they just had a really good offer for um, a WooCommerce shop, and I was building somebody a shop on a WordPress site. So I ended up going through Bluehost because it was a little bit cheaper. Mm. Um, but if you're doing it with WordPress or Wix, um, I would just get them to host it. And don't one piece of advice is I would don't rush to, to register your domain name because if you register it on a third party platform like GoDaddy or something like that, it's just an extra layer of sort of faff to transfer it away when you do build a website. Um, so so don't panic and think, oh, I've got to get this rush, you know, rushed in straight away. Just take your time, decide which platform you're going with, and then I would ask them to host it. But they're, they're fully transferable as well, so if you change your mind and end up going with somebody else later, you can redirect and, and transfer. It's just a bit complicated, you mind. Yeah. But again, you know, web tutorials, they'll all tell you how to do it, and you just have to post a little bit of code into the back office settings of your website to transfer it. And sometimes some of those things are, um, if people don't feel confident doing that themselves, that's something that, a, you know, a WordPress designer could, you know, help you get up and running with. If those sorts of things um, concern you, they can do it very, very quickly and easily and cheaply. And then you can you can work on the content yourself. Just got another follow up question from Nikki saying, how much do WordPress charge, I think, for hosting? For, for hosting. So if you get the basic, basic version, there is like, a, I think it's about four pound a month or something. You can get a really cheap one. Um, and it, that goes up to like the the middle one that I'm on is the business one, which is two hundred and forty pounds a year, and then you can go even further for like a professional one. But that's for sort of big, massive businesses that need a lot of memory and a lot of uh, data running in the in the website. So and yeah, you're helping other organisations build their websites. So that's probably why you need a bigger one, isn't it? Yeah, and for the plugins as well, because I wanted to be able to like integrate a um, my MailChimp sign up and do things like um, Elementor. Add Elementor is the one, the, the, the plugin that I use for design now. Um, I've used it on the how to website and it does make your website look a bit more slick. But the, there is the, the, there's absolutely nothing wrong with the cheapest version of, of WordPress if you want to do that. 
Um, it's just you won't be able to f- use some of the functions that you might want to use further down the line, but you can upgrade if you want if you if you want to do in the future. Yeah. And also, actually, if you really not, don't want to pay, Google are offering free websites now. So if you sign up on Google My Business, you can get a free website. I think it's like limited to a certain number of pages, but it's it's worth having a look at if you just want to have a go and um see you know see what happens with it and you're not maybe you've not got a shop on there or anything it's just a basic information website then it's probably worth having a look at that I just saw that last week actually um get yeah contact details on on your website are also really important because again that's going to feed into the information that google reads and I've just read somewhere that if you've got a, um, a phone number which is a has an area code in it, that's really useful for SEO purposes as well because it means that Google can sort of verify that you are in that area, um, and it helps the, the people who are searching for your, for services in your area. Um, and then. I've put a portfolio of work on there as well. I've personally have got one which I created in Canva. It's A4 size. And um, I've got examples of my work which I literally screenshotted and then put into the into the uh, Canva document. I think it's about 20 pages. I've got my prices in there at the end and I've got a little bit of, of about the company which sort of reflects the social value, which is... I give a discount to not-for-profits and I offer um, funded training in the form of the belting fund, which I've set up myself. So I'll put a portion um, of, of my fees away for the belting fund. So this, this is an example of what, how it might look. Um, I've These are A4, but there's no reason you can, that you can't do them on a landscape design. And I'll show you some of those after. You can bring your branding in really well to these um, and you can actually on Canva, you can make them, it, download them as a PDF or as PNG files for your social media and um, emails. But you can also download it as a video as well and um, set the number of seconds that each page runs for. So you can set music to that as well so it all becomes like a little bit of a ooh, show it it looks really nice in canva this is one that, on that sorry to keep sorry. plugging our other uh, our other workshops but we've got um, a focus session from michaela uh in april which is going to be all about creating videos and um, video content for people who've never done it before and she's going to be doing a lot on canva so if you want some step-by-step um tutorial to how to do that then uh, look, look back for that is, is there a Canva session as well, Shelley? Is there, there is a, a Canva, yeah, Yellow Jigsaw are running um, a Canva session on, uh, yeah, polishing your brand using Canva. So that one's the 16th of March and Michaela's video um, session is the 11th of April. Brilliant. So there's no excuse now. You can all be experts <laughs> in the next couple of weeks. Uh, yeah, this is this is what the central part one is one that um, I created for a client. So he just wanted something to send out to commercial cleaning customers when they first get a phone call or an email and they're not sure about what you do and they ring up and say, what kind of stuff do you do? Then you can just email them your portfolio and it's got a bit of a description about what happens, um, some nice photographs, if you can call commercial cleaning nice. <laughs> But yeah, he's got some like before and after examples in there as well, which are really good. And this this is on the right hand side. That's my examples from my portfolio. So I've got page design, websites, things like blog writing examples, um, and all the rest of it. So people, because you forget what you do sometimes as well, don't you? Or you forget what you've done, and then um, it's nice to have something there that reminds you as well. So yeah, you can save it as a PDF. If you're going to print it, you remember that it's got to be in a multiple four pages because you have like a fold in the page and then one, two, three, four pages. If does that make sense? It, when you open it out a leaf like that, it's got four pages on it. So if you want it printing, try and do a multiple four pages. 
Um, use your images and text. This is where your photos come in as well. And Canva's got a library of stock photos that you can use um, their license for. And it's got a library of video clips as well. Um, so you can have like, you know, somebody walking through the woods or, you know, a rainy day or something like that in the background. Or it's really, it's really clever um, what Canva can offer. Um, and then we've got, I've got some examples of digital uh, resumes or CVs as we know them, but on Canva they call them resumes, the American word. So if you, wherever you are at with your, with your career, um, whether you're starting a business or not, you know, whether you're just looking for a work, it's really useful to have a digital resume. So you, these can be as fancy as you like. They can be a static document with um, you look sort of a CV version. And if you look, if you go to Canva and search for um, CVs, it brings up loads and loads of templates in all different colors that you can just then click on and fill in, change the photo and put your details in it. It, it does recommend, uh, well, I would recommend putting a photograph on there definitely so people can just see your face and um, it, it helps people engage with you rather than just seeing a name. So um, you, this is where you can highlight all of your soft skills as well as your formal experience, your education or your experience. And um, you can explain anything, uh, gaps in um, employment, or you could look at trips that you've been on, educational trips or projects, special projects. So this is an example on Canva of a lady who's um, made a really nice one. So this is where your personal branding would really come through here. Um, and again, you can download it as PDF or as a video so, it, so that people can slide through. So she's just got a name on it. I mean, this was about 30 pages, so I've cut it down just for, per for the purposes of um, this training session. Um, but it is on, on Canva if you want to read it all. So she's listed the contents and she's put a little intro in there about her personality and um, what she's looking for. That's really important as well because you need to make sure that, you, that you're making some of the shots as well, calling some of the shots and say what you're looking for. If you're looking for clients or to the type of clients that you're looking for, or if you're looking for um, certain collaborators, you know, be, be specific. Um, and then she's listed, she just made it really clear and visually how what what the skills are and what she's what she's done in the past um and then uh, there was lots and lots of pages that i've not included but then at the end she's got the get in touch with me and if you save this as a pdf on canva you can link that so that um you could do a mail to link i think you could definitely do a website link so if people click on your website it'll take them straight up to the website um, that, and they've put tight instead of site. That should say really great site.com. But if, if you could have like a graphic on there that says um, click to see my website and that would link through on a PDF. Um, and then she said thank you at the end, which I thought was quite nice as well. And then there's one, this one's quite cool. He's like supposed to be an actor. I think this, these are just examples on, on Canva, so they're probably not even real people, but... He's made it um, sort of a bit arty and actorish, so it 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 shows um, it reflects like what he does. He's put a picture of, I think that's his kind of old university. That's a really clever idea as well. Although I suspect he hasn't got the copyright for that. <laughs> but yeah, with images, in if if you're using any images at all on your branding, you really need to have the copyright. Um, permissions because people can sue you so if the if if unless he's taken this picture himself that's absolutely fine but if he has ripped that off the internet then the photographer who took that photo could get back to him and say 
you you've used my photo here i took it you didn't leave a credit and you didn't ask my permission so now you owe me like 500 pounds whatever and i used to think oh it's fine you know no one's gonna follow up on that but there are actively legal companies now that chase photographs so they will search for the photographs on behalf of the photographer online and they'll get a cut of the, the fee the, and the fine. So it, you've really got to be super careful with photos. But if, you, if you've got a Canva, um, a Canva subscription and you've paid for it, or you've got the free not-for-profit version or, or anything on Canva that you've signed up for, it will let you use under the Canva licensing. And I do if it's a photo that's not been taken by a professional photographer, if you drop them a line um, and ask them, often people are happy to share them. Um, yeah. Professional photographers, obviously, it's their livelihood. So um, you absolutely would need to, to um, get in touch and probably pay them. There's another great website called Pexels, which I'll put in the chat, um, which uh, you can basically search all their banks for free images. And as long as you credit the photographer, you can usually use them for free. Um, so I'll put that in the chat and it's got a really good search function as well. Um, and usually what, what I do is um, I do a tweet or something to thank the, the photographer publicly for their image too. I'll pop that in. Yeah, it lets you download the link, doesn't it, to the kind of Twitter account. It says, say thanks to the photographer. So you, that's a really good way. Pexels is brilliant. Um, and then you, there are options on kind of Pexels or Shutterstock to upgrade so that you can buy the photograph for a small amount or... You could say if you're finding that you need that you that you're struggling to find pictures on Canva or for free, then you can pay for a subscription of like it's quite expensive though. I think you're looking at a hundred pound a year kind of the minimum, I think. Um, but yeah, and the best the best solution is take them yourself. I went I went around Wigan when I set up. Um, with my iPhone and I took some sort of arty shots of like the big face in Wigan and the uh, building in Mains Park, the big observatory on top of the hill. And you can take close-ups of things, statues, bridges, whatever. You, you know, if you're in mindfulness, you might do the woods um, or a lake or something like that. And if you've taken some nice pictures or even just 10 or 12 nice pictures, and then you can just use them kind of again and again and again, and it's a bit more personalised then as well. Um, but yeah, that is a good point about about copyright. So yeah, this the, this is the um, the gist of the online uh, CV, and then you've got that ready to send out to it people. Like, sometimes if you apply for jobs or. Um, funding, if you're doing a funding bid. Oh, he's got a video in this bit as well, which is quite nice. If, you, if you're looking for um, funding, you might want to upload this as part of your funding bid and you could show some examples of your projects and the people that you work with. Um, you could even use it for like your products and your services. So if you wanted to sell, you know, pizzas, you could put you know, you have your business story and then the menu and then how to order and that kind of thing. It's just it's just really flexible. You can use it for more or less anything. And then again, he's got his contact details at the end and I thank you. See you next time. So that's the end of the session, really, Shelley. Unless anybody's got some questions. Well, it'd be great to hear any questions. Thank you so much, Vicky. That was um, a huge amount of information. And uh, thanks to everyone for staying here and staying engaged. Oh, I can see a hand up from Marie. Is that a legacy hand or is that a new question, Marie? <laughs> it is a question. Uh, my question is, um, if you write, because I can only speak from my uh, uh, perspective if you write and let's say for example roller coaster of emotion and it's, it's the title of the the book is it better to advertise on social media as like the page i mean the the account i don't know if i can call it account because i'm not on social media at the moment if the account should be named roller coaster of emotion and deal only with emotions or if she, it should be my name marie can fact and deal with different publications for example 
I think that depends on what your plans for the future are. So if you are planning on publishing uh, more books in the future or more work in the future, and it's you okay, want, yeah. yeah, then I would set up a page in your, in your name. Um, you can do that as well because I've done it. Um, it mine at first, say, Facebook might say, you are not allowed to set up as a name. So then I would put something like Vicky Galligan Belting, and then you can change the name of your page after to just Vicky Galligan. It'll let you do that. Uh, I would set that set that up as a page, and then post if you want to. You can you can share your own posts from your page to your personal account, but you would need to begin with a personal account on Facebook. You didn't used to, but nowadays it won't let you set up a business page unless you have. A personal account first. Does that make sense, Marie? Yeah, I opened one like last week, but the question was because with your personal the page you have, I don't know, family or friends who you know might be, you know, linked or might be friending you there. So yeah. how do you then separate, or if you, do you need to? Yeah. Yeah, I know what you mean. How do you separate like your business people from your contacts? I think I would start by inviting people to like the page who you think would um, engage with you. And then I would probably post up on my personal page a couple of posts or maybe one post every week just to say, oh, I'm now doing this. Um, if you would be interested, please give my page a like. And if they're interested those friends will like your page and engage with you. If they're not interested, they'll just, they'll, they won't, will and that's fair enough, isn't it? And then from there, once you've got like-minded people liking your page, then you can start to build and grow your community then. And th there is now this thing on Facebook where your page can join groups as your page. So if you want to be in a group as your page, make make sure you're not in it as a person first, weirdly, because it won't let you do... It won't let me join a group as Vicky Gallagher and then as Belting. But if I'm not in the group, it'll let me... It'll give me the option to join as my page. Um, and you can join groups as well in that way. And then when you post, post on your page, it'll ask you if you want to share it within those groups or to those pages... And then I always do, or sometimes I do. And then people in those groups, like um, the Wigan uh, Business Networking Group, will see my, my post. And then if they're interested, they'll give me a like as well. Uh, what's the difference between an account and a page? So like I was talking um, about that roller coaster of emotion that will deal only with the you know poetry related to emotions. What would that be called? Is it a separate account or is it called a page? And what is the difference? Um, and so your account is what you set up first of all to get onto Facebook. So that would be in your name, your your personal account, and your page is like it's not a person. It's um, it's a standalone page. So it's got diff different sorts of um, tools on there. So you might be able to put an advert, you could put an advert on it. You can, um, you can use it for inviting people. So you can't invite people to like a personal page. You can ask them, add them as a friend. But I wouldn't recommend setting up, some people set up the business as a person. Um, and try and make friends with the people but Facebook really doesn't want you to do that it wants you to separate business and personal so yeah if you I would definitely set up set up your own account under your own name and then set up a page for your all which is also in your name but like somebody that I know has got one called he's called Alex Winstanley author and then all of his author stuff he posts on his page and then he might share it onto his personal account or his other, other pages and groups, but it is there as a separate entity. So sometimes people do post up, uh, um, start a page for one product, but the danger of that is that once you finish promoting that page, it's going to be irrelevant then for the, mm. for the people on it. But if you've already got a good following on your page and you bring a new product out, um, then you can keep promoting your new products on the same page then going forward.
Thanks, Vicky. Thank that's really helpful. I think we've got another question from Abby. Hi. Uh, yeah, it's just hi. Um, I'm just talking obviously about with it being sensitive subjects and stuff like that for DV and doing the private groups. How would that then work with promoting if people obviously want to remain anonymous because they're not going to then necessarily share posts and things like that. Yeah, I think you would use your page then for the promotion side of things, and you can post onto your page and then post that same post in your group. So. Um, it will people will still see the, the page posts inside your group but um yeah for, for wider promotion obviously it's it's only going to be seen by um only the things on your page are going to be seen by the outside public but yeah you can cross post could could group members just sign up to the private group without having to like your page so they can keep their themselves anonymous I think so yeah I think they can I, you can send them a link to your group so I don't think they have to like the page no because another can... option is just to have a private page um which you have to uh, accept requests to just a completely separate page so you could have like a public facing business page and then a very private page for people who wanted to um sign up to the group and, and remain anonymous yeah, you, you can change all the privacy settings on, on your group and uh, your page, I think. I'm not exactly sure with the pages because usually when I set up a page, I want everybody to see it, so I've not really gone through that process. But with groups, you can certainly set it as a closed group. You can even have it as a secret group so people can't search for it on Facebook. They'll only be able to join if you give them the link in an email or a text. Brilliant, thank you. Brilliant. Well, I'm conscious we're just coming up to time. So, are there any, uh, any? Oh, we can probably take one more question if there are any, and if not, we'll we'll wrap up for the day. Okay. This this little action plan at the end is just for something for you guys to tick off as as you go along with your personal profiling. So, I'll send this. Um, PowerPoint to, to you, Shelley, if that's okay, would you be able yeah, to? Yeah, sure, that? I can circulate it amongst everyone here. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Brilliant. Thanks, well, I just, Vicky. yeah, I'd like to take the opportunity to thank you, Vicky. That was brilliant, really, really useful. I've learned loads there. So thank you. Oh, and thanks. thanks everyone for joining us this morning. And uh, we look forward to seeing you again at one of our future workshops. Oh, before we go, Shelley, can I just save the chat as well so I can contact?